McDowell, your host for this evening's Mountain Mamas Return to the Live Screen. And joining me is Representative or Delegate Barbara Fleshhauer. How are you, Delegate? I'm good. I'm happy to be here with the Mountain Mamas. I'm a proud Mountain Mama. We love, I got my shirt on and I don't know if you noticed, but I got my little I didn't. capital cool. earrings on. Cool. Yeah, I got anybody wants to wear them. My standard pearls. You stand at pearls. Um, so I and I apologize. I have been in Missouri for several weeks, and there they are called representatives, oh, and yeah. here they're called delegates. So I'm, yeah, it's, um, yeah, you're in transition. Little difference. Back Little transition. Home. Yeah, you're back home where you belong. I am back. I am back, and um, took me a while to get readjusted, but we're good. Hey, everyone. Uh, Feel free to share out this live stream. We have a lot to talk about. We're going to, you know, grab a beverage and a snack. And because we're going to get candid eights. Do you see what I did there, folks? Candid eights. Pretty clever, I thought. And, you know, the music that I chose tonight for our introduction was called Goals. And that's one of the things that we want to talk about as we begin our conversations again with Mountain Mamas. And we're uh, waiting, I believe, Delegate Young and then uh, Lisa um, Zukov. And uh, now it said, uh, do we have the districts? I have the maps of the districts. They are very poor. Okay. Yeah, I don't I know if we'll be. I warned you that, but Lisa. Yes. Kayla should have, if we're lucky, the districts where there are no incumbents running. Because right. one of the things we wanted to do tonight is encourage people to run for office. We have um, far too few Democratic women in the less legislature. There are no Democratic women in the West Virginia Senate and only four. Uh, we used to have much larger representation of women overall and especially of women Democrats. So we're down. And um, we're going to get back up again. And that's why we're doing this show, right? That's absolutely right. And in fact, West Virginia, there's actually more women in West Virginia than there are men. And I say that because, as you pointed out, that we have so few women actually representing our population in the state. And it's very unbalanced. And I think we're you know, we've got redistricting happening. We just had the consensus taken. Um, we have, we're seeing some change. And I think with change comes opportunity. And I, it, right now is a really great time for women who are out there who are thinking about how can I make a difference? And running for office is a really great way for you to have a con to make a contribution uh, as a public servant to the state of West Virginia and improve it for everyone, regardless of um, gender. Uh, but we've got to get more women encouraged to run. Currently, redistrict. We'll just talk about redistricting a little bit. I'm going to share our screen with you a little bit. I will just warn everybody, these maps are terrible. And actually, and could, I, could I just respond to what you were saying a little bit? Um, yes. About how women can make a difference. I think that is so critical. I am an attorney. I've been practicing law for over 30 years, but I feel like I have contributed so much more in the West Virginia legislature, working on equal pay, working on children's issues, I mean, is there anything more important than making life better for our kids and our grandchildren? And I do really believe that women, we, we look at things a little bit differently. We maybe have a longer term 
perspective. We maybe aren't as selfish about what is going to promote us. We're thinking about our families, our communities, and our legislation is a little bit different. So if it's important that people, working families have childcare, that's what we're going to talk about. If it's important that working moms can go to community college and go to university and have childcare at the university, have childcare at community college, that's what I think I think women are talking about that. And a lot of our male colleagues, some of whom are wonderful, most of whom are caring and good people, but they, those things are like hardwired in our brains. So I think, I think women can make a difference. And I I can tell you that I get a lot of satisfaction about being a legislator, but I need more women. I need company. And so do the other women who are there. We meet, we need more company. Right. And, and with redistricting, I believe there are 15 districts that will not have an incumbent, which means that whoever jumps into that particular uh, district, it'll be the first time there won't be anybody that has served there before, so to speak. I'm not saying that I'm not being very articulate with that, but essentially you will not have an incumbent, which is it's It's much harder. It's like what you said. It's an opportunity. So we do single member districts from multi-member districts and the way, and there's a Republican majority and the way they, um, the way they drew the lines because they had the majority, there were many districts without any delegates, current delegates who are running. So it's an opportunity for women, depending on where you live um, to run. And, and there are a lot of um, new delegates. That's an opportunity. You might want to say, I think I can, Um, I think I have more of a chance because this person hasn't been in there very long. So there are opportunities this year. Absolutely. And, and I think you, you, you definitely hit on some really good points and um, I'm speaking on because I'm going to speak personally here because I think that's one of the great things about mountain mamas is we may not necessarily see everything the same, but we there's always this drive and ambition to really work together and to uh, share, collaborate, support, encourage. And, you know, when people think about entering politics, some people don't even think about it because maybe it's too scary. But one of the things I love about this organization is there is this empowerment within to support each other. And and so for any of you who are watching and even thinking, maybe, is that that something I can do? This is an organization that will welcome you and say, um, how can we help you? Um, And and teach you what you need to know. And so, you know, I hear people talking about the, specifically the childcare, and I'm thinking we provide public education already for K through 12. So, it seems to me it just is a natural progression to have that pre-K already to provide that for for families because my daughter has a child in daycare and she spends thousands of dollars every year. Basically, she pays her salary is what she does. So she's working, but most of that money goes to childcare, which is really unfortunate because then that money could be going into the economy, correct? Or support the family. Or to support the family. Absolutely. I, I'm sure there's a lot of things the kids would like that they don't get to have, but maybe grandma at Christmas well, can help out. Rent, so food, you know, I mean, absolutely. that's why yeah. we work is to support our families. Right. I know she's, got, she just put up a chicken shed. So she's, she was wanting chickens. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to um, look here. Uh, we've got, it looks like internet problems once again are here in West Virginia. So uh, Delegate Young, Kayla Young, is not able to join us due to internet connection problems. And uh, Lisa uh, is not able to join us as well. So uh, unfortunately, Barb, we're just going to hash this out. Um, and Okay. And so that we can give people an idea. I wish we had the maps. Kayla, if you're watching or listening and you have the 15 districts that you want to maybe share with me, uh, send them to me in the comments or post a link. 
uh, that would be very helpful so that we can do that. But again, this is an introduction about let's get candid candidates um, into the mix. Right, We have to start thinking about this now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and Sarah, another alternative is mm -hmm. if we have if there's a person who's interested in running and we have their address, um, mm -hmm. we can figure out what district they're in and get back to them. So if, um, how what would be the best way for someone to share their name and their address so we could tell them what district they're in and whether there's so anybody who might be. And, and just a little bit more about the process. The reason we're kind of anxious about this is because with the census that Sarah was talking about, the census was late. And mm -hmm. um, normally we would have a little bit more notice, but we'll have people will have to file in January. There's a three week period right. in January when you have to file and you have to be living in your place by a year from the election next year. So by November 8th, very soon, some people have moved so that they can be in a district that where there's no incumbent. Um, but it's getting very close on time to do that. But anyone who's thinking about that, they might want to run for office. I mean, you could file and then withdraw if you're not sure. But if you share your name with us and your email, and I, um, I'm just going to get out there and say my email, friendsofbarbara at gmail.com. Give me your name and your address, and I will make sure we can find out where you live and try to get back to you in time. Um, so right. And they can always message us on Facebook uh, to the, you know, to the fit, to the page. Maybe that's, that's always a, a really way. great Maybe, way. You think that's a better way? So you want to tell people for, for sure how they do that? Well, again, you just uh, hit the contact button on our Facebook page and send us a message and we'd be happy to respond. Like Barbara said, you know, tell us where you're located um, and we'll get that information to you so that you can uh, know exactly where where you are in the mix of the, the new maps, so to speak. Um, and and to, one of the things I think we want to offer as well as to maybe help people walk through this pro process are you know is this the right opportunity for you is this the right time is this what questions do you have that's the one thing that I know Barbara you will be willing to offer Kayla everyone's willing to offer this information I'm certainly willing to share what I know my knowledge and what it means to run for office um, what it takes um, you know all the information you need to make an educated and informed decision on what you want to do. Are you still there? Can I, can yes, you still yes, hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear okay. you. Okay. All right. Great. Now it does look like Susan Benzinger is, she is saying she's running in a new district 100. Cool. What, what? Wow. So it's district 100. District 100. Uh, Susan, can you tell us where that is since I don't have the map here right in front of me? Well, the Google Earth map is terrible. So, well, the, the um, PDF map is terrible too. Yes, they're both. So, but tell I'm us where you are, Susan, and why you ran. Why, why are you deciding to run? This is so great. There are so many issues out there, ladies, that really impact us, not only individually, but collectively. It, things that impact our families, jobs, um, the economy, education, child care, health care, mental health care. Everything that I think that we just in, intuitively understand the importance of early childhood education so that mothers who can work or need to work can do so without breaking the bank and ensure that their child is getting a, a good start on their education. And then secondly, into going into public education, get a really good education so that when they're ready, they can decide if they want to go to college, if they want to go to a trade school, whatever it is that they want to do, they're prepared to do that. And so I think, Barbara, you mentioned earlier that we just, men and women see things in, from different perspectives. Um, and not to say our, our male colleagues are, are bad guys. They're not. They're great. 
Um, but we do see, um, we just see th things from through different lenses, I, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So right. Zus Susan says she's running. Um, I can see her district. I looked it up. Okay, Susan's running because it is time to get off the couch and address our issues. We have hungry kids trying to get through elementary schools and we need to fix that. Okay, so oh, Susan. 100 and it's in Jefferson County and it looks like it is the far eastern part of Jefferson County. So I can see like a little bit of Shepherdstown at the top and it's, but these maps are just awful. So yeah. I, it's like beside 99 and nine, it's near Ranson and Shannondale, but I'm not sure that, and there's something in here that looks like a small community. It looks like a not very populated part of Jefferson County that is on the border of Virginia, I'm guessing. Okay. Maybe. All right. Well, as we, we, you know, this is, we're all going to take some oh, time to get. Looks like Mary Bolivar is there. And Bolivar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it okay. called Bolivar? Right. Or, I don't I know if it's Bolivar or Bolivar. I call it Bolivar. Yeah, I don't know either. And that's terrible, isn't it? I know. I should know this thing. Simone I, Bolivar. <laughs> well, in, in Missouri, we call it, and I lived in Missouri for several years before I came back to West Virginia. It's We called it Bolivar. So, you yeah. know, just it just depends, I guess, on where you are. And, and again, I just came back from several weeks there. But um, yeah, Shepherdstown, Harpers Ferry, Blue Ridge Mountain, Shenandoah Valley. Uh, it, it, it's, it's not the a main, it's not, doesn't look like, well, it's got enough people in there for a whole district. It's got um, 17,514 people. So it's, it's pretty well populated, but all right, and Susan we are thrilled say. you're thinking about this. This is so, so cool. And I personally will do anything I could to help you. And same with Sarah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, part of my background is legislative and executive branch operations. So uh, I ser I was not, you know, I did not serve in terms of uh, as an elected official, but what I did in my capacity was I did support uh, senators and statewide elected officials in their roles in serving their districts and or the state. So uh, I know a little bit about legislation and, and communications. And so we'll certainly do whatever we can to help not only how to run the communications needed and the operations needed, but then also learning what it means to be a legislator, uh, the rules of either the House or the Senate, how to pass, how to introduce legislation, you know, amendments, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all of those different things. But Susan, uh, Susan does say it's Bolivar. It's Bolivar. Okay, all right. So you gave me right. the, the pronunciation there. It's Bolivar. Okay. Um, so, well, welcome, Susan. And again, that is one issue that is so important in um Susan's having a kickoff this month. All right. We're going to yeah. help Susan kick oh, things off. So cool. So when um, is it where? Yes, yeah, Susan, uh, I was just getting ready to ask, why don't you share your kickoff information? And uh, she says she appreciates all the help I can get. This is my first time running for office. Well, Susan, um, go just head first into it, girl. Just, just go, just dive right in, be bold, be brave. This, you, you got this, you've got this and we need you. And, and I, again, we do have so many hungry children in the state of West Virginia. We have children who are facing trauma. We have children who are growing out up without the important skills and coping mechanisms and mental health care and physical health care that they need. And so I applaud you for the teachers out there. I, I simply do not understand how you do it, but I am grateful that you do. Um, but we definitely need more women. And if you're, again, if maybe you never thought about it and you want to think about it, let us know. Send me a message through the Mountain Mamas page. If I can't respond, then I'm going to delegate someone, uh, maybe Barbara, maybe Kayla, maybe Susan, whomever. It could be anyone that uh, that can help you answer, you know, some questions that you might have. 
So with the redistricting, again, we're going from multi-member districts, correct? And we're going to single member districts. So tell me how that changes the dynamics in terms of the numbers well, of delegates we had, and senators. Yeah, we had a mixture of some single member districts and a lot of multi-member districts. So um, I'm from Montegalia County and we had five members and we all represented the county. And that is my preference because that means you can call several people to get help if you have a problem. Mm -hmm. um, and now we will be we will have smaller areas of Montegalia County that we will be representing. So um, it changes things for people. Uh, some people think it's a lot better because they can go to one person and they know exactly who their representative is or their, as you say, delegate. That's what we're formally called. But it also yeah. kind of breaks up the county because I think most people think of themselves as members of counties in West Virginia. We're a little bit different. So um, some members like mine were large. We, we have had increasing population. We're going to have six mm -hmm. We're going to have six delegates next year. And they'll, yeah, we'll you picked up one. Yeah, we picked up a delegate. Um, some counties are split into three or four, and um, it's it's going to be harder to tell. You know, you might have a delegate like Wetzel County, which is next door to us. They um, are going to be split four different ways, and they'll be merged with other counties where they may not be familiar with someone. So it's going to take a while to get used to. This redistricting lasts for 10 years. And um, under our federal constitution and our state constitution, we have a requirement of one person, one vote. So basically, there are about 17,800 people in each district, plus or minus 5%. And then um, because we're single member districts now, and that, that's how many each delegate will represent. Our state constitution says that we are, it has a formula and this new map didn't use the formula exactly um, because our state constitution really prioritizes counties. And I think there was some effort made to keep counties whole, but, um, and you can't, they're sort of impossible to exactly balance. You can't have the exact number of voters that because our county borders aren't that way. But one of the things that the county border does is it makes it harder to gerrymander. You right. Know, that was one of the arguments we had. Now, I, we lost that argument and they are allowed to go in outside of county borders, um, not following the language of the Constitution. But um, and that's where we are. And unless litigation changes it, we will be mm -hmm. this way. The, the, the boundaries that are on the legislative Web page it's www.legis.wv, well, what is it? It's not exactly. Here, I can put it up here real quick. Um, you can look it up and it's it's really tricky. Um, there's a PDF map of the districts and then there's a Google Earth map that is, uh, you have to download Google Earth and it says KMZ and that's where you can see more exactly where it is, but it's um, wvlegislature.gov and then you wanna go to uh, redistricting. You want to click on a tab that's joint and go to redistricting and then you can find it. Is that you have you have the whole site there? Yep, I put the link in there so people can and uh, if you want to use the Google map, the Google Earth, the KMZ files, you have to download the uh, Google Earth Maps application. Uh, and certainly you can do that. It is quite interesting. I will share a screen here real quick um, so that people can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, let's see. And uh, that's the wrong one. It's okay. We'll get out of there and see if that'll work. Share our screen. Been a while since we've been doing this, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. How's that look? Can we see that? Okay. So, you know, here is the um, looks like the uh, delegates uh, districts, and it's really kind of hard to see some of these areas because 
Um, they're so small. Some of them, you know, look up here. You've got some pretty small. Oh, in Mon County, um, it's Mon really, County. really small. Maybe we could try to go to uh, Susan's district 100 and show that as an example. Oh, goodness. Over in the, the eastern panhandle. Yes. Let's see. But even those are pretty there small. There it is. So can you enlarge that one? Yeah, we're going to click on that. There you are, Susan, right here. I'm not sure why it's not picking up the, the, the number. The, well, there it goes. Well, there's. Isn't it the one down at the bottom? I don't know. There's District 99. Well, it may just. I think it's down on the bottom right. That's the way it looked. But maybe I'm. Oh, it's so hard to see, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's hard. Yeah. Oop, there we go. Hold on. See, I'm, I'm, oh, wait, maybe that's it. There we go. There we go. All right. Population 17,621. So now the deviation, what exactly does that mean, Barbara? Do you know? Yes. There's an ideal number that you take from the total state population is, which is 1.78 million. You divide that by a hundred because we have a hundred delegate districts and the ideal is like 17,800 17, or so, maybe 890 people. And you can see that that's like 3,000 or 300 less yes, than the ideal. Right. right. Yeah, and, and like you said earlier, I mean, it's it's really, really hard to make it down to the, the penny. You know, it, it's just going to have to uh, it is give hard. some and take some here and there. And like our county clerk, she said she was, and if you think about this, this is going to change the precincts because yes. now there will be in Jefferson County, I don't know how, like in our county, we have six delegate districts. There have to be six ballots uh -huh. that are tied to those districts. And there were going to be people that are in one senatorial district or another. So right. there will be more ballots and they'll have to figure out how to do those precincts so that they match up to that. It's going to be a lot of work for the county clerks. And my county clerk said it was going to take a couple of weeks before they finish that up. So wow. it's hard to know. This is hard. And you can blow this up to see much, much more, you know, right. um, and you could do that. You, you should try this at home. And you can get a general yes. idea looking at the PDF map. But this one, you can see, you know, like little shopping centers and you can see woodsy areas and stuff like that. And you might be able to figure out where you are. But it's it is not this is the first time we've ever done it this way. It's not that easy. But um, you can tell it's if we know your address, we can tell where you are. So here is the, um, is there a better, oh, hold on just a second here. That's this is the congressional district. So we lost a congressional member, um, correct? Yes. And that is, and so, all, that includes whole counties. Did you see right. that question from Cindy there? Yeah. So is there a better place to find detail map? Uh, house district maps. I can't tell what the new squeaky line through Tyler County is along Route 18. Um, the best thing, I, and, and Barbara, correct me if I'm wrong, is to um, go to that link that we provided earlier and you can look at the PDF. I'm going to pull up the PDF map for you so Actually, that you can... I think I think the best thing is probably the the um, Google Earth map. You just have to blow it up enough. Okay. And in all likelihood, Route 18 is the dividing line and it's on one side of the road is one district and on the other side is the other one. But Cindy, if you're thinking about running, which I hope you are, I think you would be a great candidate. You can share your address with us and we'll try to figure that the answer to your question exactly. But it's, right. it's very, very hard to tell that either it's harder from the PDF map, but it, the the Google Earth map is really hard too. Sorry, yeah. and no, and and, and you know what? Thing. If I had been in charge, it wouldn't be this way. 
Now, yeah, let's seize on that moment, shall we, for just a second. We need more women in charge, folks. This is part of the problem. I think we it would have been a lot clearer had there been more women involved, but that's my opinion. But I think I'm probably right. Okay, um, maybe Cindy can tell us what the just if, if we go to Tyler County, maybe we can blow it up enough to figure out the answer, because that's what people are going to have to do sometimes. But my guess is that most times the lines are based on geographical. Um, I don't know what the word is, monuments or or normal boundaries like rivers and streets and roads. So right. that is what most of the boundaries are. But if there was an attempt to squiggle somebody out of a district or put somebody inside a district, then maybe maybe they broke those. And and it goes down to census blocks. You know, it goes down to very small measurements. Now, Tyler County is up in this area, right? Uh, no, more, more to your, um, more towards the western part. Yeah. So, and are they? Of course, they're not marked. That's also not right. helpful, is it? Yeah. This isn't. It's not helpful. It's over near Marietta. Oh, are is they where near? it's at? Isn't it this up here? Is this Tyler County oh, here? They are marked. Nine I'm sort of small. And it's next to, it's near Doddridge and Ritchie. And um, I think it's, I think it's south, your, move your hand south. I, but it is so hard for me to see it, what your map is. Yeah, saying. it's hard. It really is hard. Um, so, but here's the other thing, folks, that I will tell you. If you want to um, do this one-on-one -on -one and do uh, just a video uh, chat with, me and or one of the uh near wetzel okay um me and uh one of the delegates or someone else who can be very helpful um just again send us a message uh you can send me an email sarah at the media squirrel.com i can help you send us a message via facebook um or youtube we can uh, respond to you there as well and we will help you figure this out uh, and again, we're still learning. We've got we've got delegates, elected officials who are having to move because they're the redistricting has put them out of their district. So they're having to move, which brings me to another point that Barbara, you mentioned earlier, which is that you must live in your district for a full year before the election. So if you're wanting to file or thinking about it, go ahead and file now. Um, you can go to the Secretary of State's office and go to the elections. We'll go ahead and put that um, comment, that uh, link in the comments as well. And you can fill out the paperwork right there. And again, if you have questions, just let us know. We're here to help to um, assist you in, in answering the questions that you need answered. But it's really Actually, critically me, important. Something a little bit. If you want to file for office, the filing period is in January. There are three weeks in January. That's right. Yes. You can file with the Secretary of State if you want to start raising money. So you can say you can say your name and your campaign, and all you need is you and a treasurer. You need a name of your treasurer, and you can file to start raising money, which it sounds like if Susan is going to have a kickoff, she probably needs a little bit of money to pay for yeah. the popcorn and Kool-Aid which is what um, Ann Richards said that you should, you know, don't spend a whole lot on receptions. Um, but, um, and it's so complicated now with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. thinking about doing a kickoff and I finally concluded I was just going to do a press release with a video because I couldn't figure out a place that would be safe. Um, and it's too, the weather is too uncertain now to be outside and um, it's it's just complicated, but that doesn't mean that it isn't important and it isn't worth doing. But when you officially file, once you figure out some of these questions, um, it's a three week period in January. That's right. And I, and uh, yes, thank you for correcting me on that. I think I, I made it was a little unclear based on what I said, um, but it is really important that you start thinking about this now um, so that if you aren't you know, it, based on the redistricting that you're making sure what district that you're going to be running in 
and getting all this information beforehand. And again, we're, these are opportunities, as you mentioned, with COVID and some of the, the I guess, challenges that we're facing during uh, elections this, the last couple of years. This, again, it's an opportunity. If you're looking to host a virtual event, let me know. I, I don't have to be here. I'll be in the background just managing things, you know. So we can make that happen for you. Just let us know what you need. We can make sure that we get in. all the people in that you want in, invite and converse. It can be a town hall. It can be a reception. It can be whatever it is that you want. And it can be done virtually. And so you can even do kind of a door-to-door -door thing, tie on, which we can explain to you later. But the point is, do not neglect or negate the power of virtual um, conversations like this. Um, and it, it could, they can be private. They don't have to be open. Uh, they can be private. So lots of ways for you to continue to connect with your constituents, with your voters um, virtually. So that was a really great point uh, that you made there, Barbara. So Although I'm excited, uh, I'm excited that Susan is going to have a kickoff. It's much more exciting to do that in person. And there are ways to, oh, there's her event there's announcement. Her there are ways to do it where you can protect everyone. I mean, obviously, they're protecting people in schools and university. You can do right. it. You have to be careful. So Absolutely. way to go, Susan. And it, January uh, 10th through the 29th is the filing period. Thank you so much, Patty, for um pitching that in for us. And um, Susan, since you're the first one to say, I'll let you borrow my uh, West Virginia Capitol earrings if you want <laughs> for your kickoff. You just let me know. But yeah, so this is the um, start of a conversation that we are having with West Virginians and specifically West Virginia women who are considering running for office, or maybe you've never even considered running for office. Maybe this is the first time you've even really even uh, you know, thought about, is it possible? Um, because we are, I think, the lowest number of women nationally in our state legislature. Am I correct? We're, we're very close to the bottom. There are a couple of yeah. other states that are that are fighting hard for last place, but we're very near the bottom. Yeah. And that's, again, we're missing the opportunity to um, represent our interests um, our family interests, our children's interests, things that we just see differently, maybe from our male colleagues. And again, we're not beating up on our male colleagues. We're just saying that we need a greater balance for representation, equal representation um, in our uh, House of Delegates and in our state Senate. And uh, so we need more women to step forward and say, I'm willing to do this, but I'm going to need help. And we will answer your questions and help guide you along the way and provide you with some, uh, hopefully some answers to your questions. And, uh, you know, we're still learning about the redistricting maps, right, Barbara? I mean, all of us are. It's, it's going to be a learning curve here for us. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, hold on. We've got another comment here. All right. Okay, well, I can't think of anything else. Um, and yes, Patty, we, we mentioned that earlier. Uh, we, women actually, um, are there are more women in West Virginia than there are men. It's 1% plus. So um, yeah, anyway that's uh we've got we've got to have better representation so uh delegate flash hour thank you so much uh i know you carried the weight tonight for uh, the rest of the team uh but again our internet connections have failed some of us unfortunately it's the same old story but uh it happens in west virginia all yeah, the time the good news so, is we're going to be doing a lot of investment uh into broadband because yes. of the build back better program so I'm yes. hoping that we will be seeing, I mean, we're so desperately need this in a state, a rural state like West Virginia. We need better broadband. So that's something that women who are working with their children on their homework, women who are trying to work at home, like men who are trying to, I mean, families that are trying to work at home. It's, we desperately need decent broadband. So, um, and actually that's something all parties, all genders agree on. So let's hope with Absolutely. this Build Back Better program that we will get um, 
more money for internet and we'll we'll be able to handle it if we have another pandemic or or another disaster like this it's it's really rough well and, and you're already seeing a shift of people working remotely more and more companies are seeing it as an advantage and an opportunity so you're going to see a greater number of people actually having that opportunity to work from home so it's going to be even more and that's a good thing remember how employers mm -hmm. used to say we can't control people if they work from home we can't trust them well you can trust us yeah you can trust Absolutely. us and, and yeah. that's, a, you know, that's one of those very strange silver linings about the pandemic is it allows people the freedom to have a more flexible schedule and to blend uh, work and family. And hopefully um, we'll get some women who want to be in the legislature and they'll blend work and family, too. Absolutely. Well, everyone. Thank you for those of you that have tuned into the live stream and for those of you catching it on the replay. Thank you for joining tuning in. And again, if you're someone who is interested, a, a woman who is interested in running for office, uh, hey, let us know. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Point out which districts you're in now that the redistricting has taken place. What else are we th missing? Share your missing? address. We need your address to figure out for sure what your what district you're in. Yes. Send us your address. And I'm going to put my email uh, in here so that if people need to reach me directly and then um, I can copy them on other folks like yourself um, who may be able to provide them information uh, better than myself. So anyway, thank you again all for joining Mountain Mamas Monday. We uh, look forward to future conversations with you, answering your questions, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Sarah. Bye. Thanks, Cindy. Thank Bye.